Welcome. This is a companion video to my video Floral Blush. It's a step-by-step -step tutorial where I'll talk about my palette, my equipment, the painting surface I'm working on, I'll talk about my approach as I start the painting, and then I'll talk through the progression as the painting develops. It's important to note that this is the equipment and the materials that I like to work with. It's an approach and style that I've developed after watching many others and admiring the terrific work that people have put out there. I think it's important that you take the pieces that work for you. You don't try to copy somebody, but you try to develop your own style. Welcome to my studio. As I mentioned, my approach to painting, the materials I use, the environment I choose to work in are what works for me. It may not work for everybody, but I like to work in a well-organized workspace without a lot of clutter. I feel it's an environment that I can be most productive in. I work at a drafting table, and this is a table I keep at my side. It has my palette, two large containers of water, a spray bottle, a rag and my brushes. You'll notice I have two large containers of water. The first one on the left is what I put my brush in for initial rinse and the one on the right is a secondary rinse and it helps keep the brush clean and keeps it from getting contaminated and the colors getting muddy. This is my palette. It's a ceramic palette from Cheap Joe's. It has 30 wells in it and I like to keep my mixing area clean. I know some people never clean their palate and they're very proud of the fact that their palate is like a fine aged wine um, but that's great because that works for them but that's something that just wouldn't work for me I like to have my mixing area clean in fact I clean it several times through, during the completion of a painting I mentioned that my palate has 30 wells in it and the colors are arranged from warm to cool and while I have 30 colors, there's really 8 to 10 that I use most often. The other ones, I don't use near as much. The primary colors that I use for my painting Floral Blush are Sap Green, Royal Blue, Ultramarine Blue, Quinacridone Coral, and Pyrrole Red. My green shades are a mixture of sap green, pyrrole red, and royal blue. The pyrrole red, when mixed with the sap green, helps drive it towards neutral and helps take the rawness off the green. And the royal blue helps me create my darker values. My red shades are a mixture of quinacridone coral, ultramarine blue, and royal blue. The royal blue, again, when mixed with the quinacridone coral gives me my darker valued reds. I work at a drafting table. I keep my work surface at a slight incline. I like to work on uh, 140 pound cold press Lanaquero watercolor paper. I feel it's wider than some brands and it allows for some moderate lifting. I use masking tape to tape it to my board. I don't do any pre-stretching, but I rarely have any trouble with buckling, and it's a paper that I've had a lot of success with over the years. An important first step in develop your painting is determining where your focal point or center of interest is going to be. To do this, I use the rule of thirds. If you're not familiar with the rule of thirds, you can look it up in the internet and find plenty of explanations. But to summarize, you divide your paper into three sections, horizontally and vertically, and where the lines intersect, those are your best choices for locating the center of interest. I began my painting with a loose wash to establish a color scheme, then move on to deciding my focal point or center of interest. I have four best choices, that being where the lines intersect once dividing the paper into thirds, horizontally and vertically. So for this painting, I've decided to use the upper right corner where the lines intersect to be my center of interest. This is where I'll build my strongest value contrast and have the most detail to become a focal point. Now I'm ready to paint. 
I'll work from light to dark developing values as I progress through the painting. I'll start to develop my strongest values in most detail around my center of interest first. So keep in mind that my upper right corner is going to be my focal point or center of interest and that's where I started my painting. And I'll do a lot of my work in that area first as I start to build layers and develop my values. When I drew the sketch of the flowers, I had indicated where some of the petal shapes were. So I'm applying a wash in the space behind the petals that's suggesting the form of the flower. Uh, I'm starting to work with negative space I'm not painting on the petals as much as I'm painting underneath them to move the, the, the shape of the petal forward. Something you'll see me do frequently throughout the painting is use a very fine mist spray bottle to soften the edges and diffuse color. I have a very, very fine mist bottle that I really like. It's made by Atelier for their acrylic paints, but it's really good at diffusing paint and creating soft edges, and I use it quite frequently. I continue to work developing all three of the flower shapes, and then I'll begin working on the background and the space in between the flowers. It's important to note that my objective isn't to create a botanical study. I have no reference at this point. I'm just trying to develop the painting using shapes and value contrast and color uh, to develop my composition. And here I am using the spray bottle again. And it does a nice job of softening edges and diffusing color, but it can make the paper very wet. And one of the steps you won't see in my video is the time I take to dry the paper with a hairdryer. I, I dry it frequently throughout the development of the painting so that I can keep nice, clean, fresh layers of color as I apply my paint. Now I'm finishing up the initial uh, first layer on the last of the flower shapes before moving on to start developing the space in between the flowers. Now I'm going to begin working in the area around the flower shapes, working in negative space and by working in the background behind the flower and start to build deeper values it's actually going to send the floral shapes forward and give them more credibility. I'll spend a lot of time developing the negative space between and around the flowers, not working so much within the interior edges of the flower, but more on the exterior edges of the flower and the, the leafy foliage that I have surrounding the flowers. I've continued to work around my center of interest, building my values even though they're still fairly light at this point. And you can see that I've changed colors from red to green. And this is where my initial wash kind of serves as my color map as I build my values. Um, it's not set in stone, but it lays a good foundation for where my areas of color are going to transition from one to the other on the painting. At this point, I'm going to start to go with a much deeper value. And I'm starting where I started with some of the initial uh, negative painting behind the flowers. Working with this dark value is really going to start to send some of these floral shapes forward. You'll also notice that as I develop this painting, I try and create some motion and some flow from a center of interest into the rest of the painting. This is also where using the spray bottle again to soften edges and diffuse color 
gives a nice effect and you can use that by the direction that you spray to actually try and create some um, suggest some motion at this stage I've done quite a bit of negative painting behind the flowers and between the flowers and I've started to work with much deeper values and you can see that the majority of the work has been done around my center of interest but I'm starting to spread uh, the values changes through the rest of the painting I'm not using any reference as I develop this painting I'm just designing with shapes I imagine where a leaf might be behind the flower and use that to actually send the flower forward uh, I'll look at the space behind what I feel is a, as a leaf shape and I'll paint that shape behind the leaf and, and that shape in turn gives me an opportunity to create other shapes as I work around the exterior edges of shapes instead of the interior edges of shapes when you paint positively you tend to paint on things and I'm trying to work in negative space so I'm painting around the exterior edges of shapes and I refer to the flowers as shapes or leaves as shapes uh, the subject doesn't really matter to me I'm just viewing the, the whole thing as shape making I'm painting this from imagination however the same process works just as well if you're using a photo for reference or painting plein air uh, it's just what elements you choose to pick up in your your artwork and and paint you can focus on negative areas uh, of a photo that you're painting or, or work on positive shapes it's a personal choice but this process works just as well whether you're using a reference or not the painting is fairly well developed here at this point you can see there's a lot of activity around where I've chosen for my center of interest and you can start to see some motion being created to move you into the painting the painting can get pretty busy if you're not careful you need to create large shapes as well as the, the fine detail shapes and one of the ways you can uh, create some larger shapes is by putting on a large wash or glaze over top some of the brushwork uh, we're working with transparent watercolor so the intricacy of the work that's done prior still shows through but it comes together in a larger shape and gives the eye a place to rest there's a light leaf shape that I want to bring forward so I'm going to accomplish that by actually painting a darker leaf shape behind it suggesting that there's a darker leaf shape which gives overlap creates depth and helps the lighter uh, leaf stand out I'm applying dark tones in this area and it's creating shapes that move back in space and helps create depth behind the the floral shapes the paintings come a long way now I'm working on the finishing details one of the things I like to do is suggest linear shapes that could be stems or a vine that's going over top or under other shapes and I do this by starting with a application of a dark value and I pick up my brush and I pick it the same shape up on the other side of another shape so it suggests that the the line is going underneath or over top another shape or value and I do this quite a bit uh, as I near the end of the painting one of the last steps I take with many of my paintings is to come in at the end with a liner brush and a darker value and I give the suggestion that there are stems or vines or some kind of linear greenery uh, that are woven through the, uh, the foliage and through the composition and this is a good example where I start with a linear shape and I pick up my brush 
over top of other uh, shapes, whether it be a leaf or a flower, and it gives the impression that the uh, shape is moving over or under other objects. I first worked with a dark valued green on my liner brush and now I'm going to come back through using the same concept but using a dark value red. Another technique I like to use is to come at the end with a touch of uh, brighter or a different color. It gives just a little bit of extra highlight to some of the areas of the painting and it's a real good tool to bring more focus to your center of interest or focal point. You can see me applying touches of a brighter red here and then I come in with a spray bottle and that does a nice job of softening the edges and diffusing the color and it gives just a little accent um, throughout the composition. And that's my painting, Floral Blush. I hope you enjoyed and got value from this companion step-by-step -step tutorial. If you did, please comment and let me know.